Hi, I'm Susan with the Westchester Township History Museum, and today we are going to be creating this picture of a bunny. So you can use whatever materials you have at home for this. You just need some kind of surface to draw on and something to draw with. So for this version, I used a canvas and I used paint, but you can also do it using markers on paper. You can also do it using crayons on paper. Today I'm actually gonna be using paint on paper, so that's another option, but you can use whatever drawing materials you have at home. Now we're going to create our picture. So again, I am using paint on paper, but you can use whatever materials you have. The first thing we're going to do before we add any color is we're actually gonna draw this out in pencil. That way we have kind of a roadmap for when we start adding color to it. So the very first thing we're gonna do, make sure you have a pencil, maybe even two in case one breaks. You can also have an eraser if you want. Uh, but the first thing we're gonna start with is the horizon line. So that's this line back here. It just separates the sky from the ground. So you can put your horizon line wherever you want. I usually put mine pretty high on the paper, so I have a lot of ground to work with down here, but you can put it way low, you can put it in the middle. I'm gonna put mine right about here. Because this is a snowy ground, you don't have to make it perfectly straight across. It can kind of waver like that, like it's a natural ground. There's snow piled up on it. So now we have our horizon line. So we have our ground here that our rabbit's gonna be sitting in and our trees are gonna be sitting in, and then we have the sky up here. So next, we're gonna draw the rest of our background, so the stuff that's behind the rabbit, and that's gonna be trees. I'm gonna draw two trees. You can draw as many trees as you want. These pine trees are really just a series of triangles kind of stacked on top of each other. So figure out where you want your first tree to start. I'm gonna start it right about here, and just draw a triangle. It doesn't have to be a perfectly shaped triangle. Again, just like the ground, trees are natural objects. They're not gonna be perfectly straight lines. And then for the other triangles, I'm gonna draw three. You can draw more than that if you want really tall trees. I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger as they get lower on the tree. So that one's a little bit wider. This one's gonna be a little bit wider than that. There's my first tree. And then the stump is just two lines next to each other. You can have a stump like that. You can have a really thick stump, really thin one, whatever you want. So I'm gonna draw my second tree. I'm gonna put it back here. So again, just start with a triangle. And then make it a little bigger. And a little bigger after that. You can adjust, and then again a little stump. So now we have our background. So next, we are gonna draw our rabbit. Details like these lines we can add at the end. Um, and same with the tree, if we wanna add any of those light green highlights. We're just drawing the big shapes right now and then like the face. So we're gonna draw our rabbit next. We're gonna start with the head. So for that, kind of figure out, we're gonna have a rabbit, my rabbit's gonna sit right down here in this big open space. I'm gonna take two fingers, put them right along the edge of my paper. And then I'm gonna put a dot right there. That's gonna be the side of my rabbit's head. And then from this side, I'm gonna do four fingers, do a dot. Try to make it as close to a cross from that dot as you can. So I'm gonna go a little too low. So now we have the sides of the rabbit's head. And now we're gonna do the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna take three fingers, put it, if you want, you can connect those with a really light line. Also when you're drawing this whole picture, try not to draw really heavy lines like that. Draw, hold your pencil really lightly. That way if you make a mistake, it's really easy to erase the line. But also this is all gonna get covered up with whatever paint or markers or crayons you're using. So don't worry about making this drawing perfect. So now we have the line going across, the two sides of our head. You're gonna take three fingers, Put them above the line, put a dot. That's how high up your head's gonna go. Three fingers underneath, dot. That's how low it's gonna go. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to connect these lines. So we're not gonna do it with a straight line like that. We're gonna do a curve to create that head. So curve up to that side, and a curve down here, back up back over here. Once you get that done, if you decide you want your head to be a little bigger or smaller, you can adjust it. Don't erase any lines. Just kind of make them a little bit wider or skinnier, depending on what you want. So I want my head to be a little bit rounder, so I'm gonna trace right around the outside of that line. Use it as a guide. You make little adjustments as you go. So there is our basic head of the rabbit. So now I'm gonna draw the nose. That's why this line is really helpful. So take that line, go right into the center of it. Just draw that circle for your rabbit's nose. Okay, so next we are going to do the body. 
So the way we're doing this is go right down to the center and then take three fingers again, do a dot. Three fingers on this side, do a dot. And then you're gonna draw that line down to the bottom of the paper. And again, if you look at this and you're like, I want my rabbit's body to be a little wider or skinnier, you can adjust that. So I'm gonna make mine a little wider and just draw another line right outside that one. Change it just a little bit. All right, so now we are going to do the rabbit's ears. So for that, we're gonna come out, here's our center of the head, of the top of the head. We're gonna come just to the side of it. So what we're gonna do, put about two fingers, do a dot there. Two fingers from this side and do a dot there. And those are gonna be kind of the center of the ears. So now, however wide you want your ears to be, you're gonna do a dot on either side of that one. And then you're gonna come up from here to determine how tall you want your ears to be. I'm gonna make mine pretty tall, so I'm gonna draw that dot. And then I'm just gonna connect these two dots up to the top. And take your time, there's no rush. You're gonna do the same thing on this side. So you had your two fingers from the center. Now from here, you're gonna just see how wide you want your ears to be and put a dot on either side. Trace this up. You can try to make it equal to that one, but if you don't, it's not a big deal. It'll be a little different. There, and then connect it all the way up. So that's actually gonna be the inside of our rabbit's ears. So if you look at my rabbit, he has this pink inside of his ear and then he has the gray around it. So now this is gonna be our guide for doing the outside. You're just gonna start and trace all the way around the outside. All the way back down. Same thing on this side. Trace all the way around. Now we have our rabbit's ears. So now we have all these little details left. We have the eyes, kind of the snout of the rabbit and the mouth. And we have his little white tummy down here. So for the tummy, you're just gonna take two fingers right underneath the chin and do a dot. And then that's gonna be the top and you just kind of arc downwards. Two curved sides, so make that as wide as you want. So if you want your side you want a little wider, correct that. Now I have my rabbit's tummy. The eyes are just gonna come right up here on either side, wherever, however close or far away you wanna make them. I'm gonna do a circle circle, kind of right under those ear dots. And then you're gonna do another circle around that one. Try to have that part of the eye at the bottom of the eye. It doesn't have to be perfect though. So there's our rabbit's eyes. And then this kind of snout we have here, it's gonna go right around the mouth. So that, you can just draw a circle right around that circle. Try to have the nose near the top, but it's okay if it's not. And then the two lines underneath are just a J, two J's, one's backwards, the letter J. And you can draw little freckles now if you want. So now we have our rabbit. So our next step is to fill this all in with color. So I'm going to be using paint. You can use whatever you have available. I'm gonna show you some tips for paint. Oh, one more thing. So you don't have to erase any of these lines, but if any of them are confusing you um, when you're starting to add color, you can take some time and erase them. Like if you wanna make sure the rabbit's ear is gonna block this part of the tree, so I can erase that. That way I don't get confused about what parts of the tree I have to paint. Put that over here. Now you can see where I paint there. Same with the horizon line, if that's any confusing to you. Erase that. And then down here, if these lines are confusing, I can get rid of those. Same with these. Anything that looks like it might make it hard to tell where you're supposed to put what color, go ahead and just erase it. There we go. So now we are ready to add some color to our picture. You can do with your rabbit whatever color you want. Um, this one's gray, but if you remember the examples I had, I had an orange rabbit. You can do whatever kind of rabbit you want. 
Same with the trees in the background. I'm gonna show you um, with these colors, but again, pick whatever colors you have available or whatever colors you wanna make your rabbit. So when we're painting, there's some tips. One, before, if you're using paint, you're gonna to wanna to get your brush wet right away. That's gonna make that paint easier to spread. So I have my water cup here. And then after, anytime you're dipping your brush in the water, you then wanna dry it off on a paper towel. This keeps from having too much water on your brush and making the paint splatter everywhere in places you don't want it. So always make sure you're dabbing that extra water off your brush. And then in between every color, anytime you switch a color, like if you're doing blue and you're switching to green, clean your brush really well in the water. And again, dry it off. So the way I'm gonna add paint to this is I'm gonna start with my background and work my way forward. So I'm gonna start with this blue sky in the background. I'm gonna get my blue paint. For my palette, you don't need anything fancy. I'm just using just a plate, disposable, so you don't have to wash it afterwards. And then you can use whatever brushes you have available to you if you're using paint. So we're gonna start with this up here, and then I'm gonna fill in the main colors. When we get to these details down here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the area around it's really dry so you don't smear anything, but I'll uh, show you how to do that when we get there. For now, we're just filling in these big blocks of color. When you're painting, Try not to have huge blobs like that. That's gonna take a long time to dry. You wanna really spread the paint out as you're going. It's gonna make it dry a lot faster and you'll be able to move on to a new section of your painting without worrying about smearing anything. Also, let's say you're painting and you actually get some paint where you don't want it. Let this completely dry and then you can paint right over it with the right color if you make a mistake and put a color where it's not supposed to go or where you don't want it. Really easy to fix paint, but if you let it dry first, it's a lot easier. Just make sure we'll let that area dry completely. And then we'll go ahead and fix that with the color that we wanna put on that tree. So again, spread that out. And then yeah, anytime you're switching colors, make sure you dry your paintbrush. Make sure you get the water really, really clean between every single color. All right, so now I'm going to fill this in with color. For the gray on my bunny, I actually do not have a gray paint, so what I'm going to do, put that in the water, so I'm going to mix black with white. So if you don't have gray paint, or you just need a paint that's a lighter color, just take that color, and add a little bit of white to it. You can mix it together. 
Now I have my gray color I can use for the rabbit. Now that we have all our main blocks of color down, we are gonna start doing our details. So before you do these details, you wanna make sure the paint you have is pretty dry. Um, but now we're gonna add things like the green, this other green on the trees, this blue on the snow, and then do the eyes and the mouth on the rabbit. So that's our next step. So we're gonna start, let's start with the mouth. We'll do that pink. So you're gonna take a small brush. And as you can see, I painted the whole section white and then I'm gonna let it dry. Um, and you can still see the pencil lines through it a little bit. If you're having trouble seeing your pencil lines, it's perfectly okay to go back and redraw them so that you know exactly where you're putting that paint, if that makes you feel better. You can also just put the paint down. All right, so now we're gonna do this pink nose, mouth, and little, little whisker dots. So I'm gonna fill that in. Again, the white on the paper already is already completely dry, so we don't smear it. And do our rabbit's little nose. So there is our rabbit's nose and mouth. Next, we're gonna do the black part of the eyes. These two dots here. Again, I painted this entire section white and then you can still see my pencil lines through it, but if you need to, again, you can go back and redraw them so you can see them better. We'll take our black paint. Let's do a do a tiny bit over here. You don't need too much for these eyes. Again, you're gonna take small brushes you have. Paint that black. And then we have our rabbit's eyes. Next, we're gonna do all these other details. So the snow, the trees, and then if you see on mine, I have this lighter gray outline around my rabbit. You don't have to do that, but I will show you how to do it. So for all three of those colors, we're gonna need lighter versions of the colors we already have. So just like when I made this gray, I mixed black and white together. You get a lighter version of this gray. I'm just gonna add more white to it. So we'll go right here, mix in some more white paint. So now we have our lighter gray. To do that outline that I have on mine, you just go right around the edge with a little brush, all the way around the rabbit, and also go under the chin so you kind of show where the chin and the body are separated. There's our gray outline for our rabbit. Now we're gonna do the light green on the tree. So just like with the black and the gray, we're just gonna add a little bit of white to this green we already have on our palette. Start with that much. You're gonna take a small brush, 
mix it together. Try not to get that brown in there. Now we have our light green. I'm just gonna do lines kind of going up the tree. You can make them as thick as you want. You can make as many as you want. So there is our green, a little bit more up here. Now we're going to do the blue lines. So these lines here. And for that, again, we're just gonna add a little bit of white to the blue we already have on our palette. Start with that. Clean one of my other brushes. There we go. Mix that together. Now we'll do some lines in our snow. You can do those wherever you want, just little wavy lines like that. I think it looks like there's some snow drifts on our painting or our drawing. If you want, you can even do a light blue line right along the horizon line. One final touch we can do, if you want it to look very wintry, take a little bit more white and a small paintbrush, you can add little dots of snow in the sky. So there's one more thing we need to do before our painting is complete. Whenever an artist makes a painting or a drawing, they sign it. That way, a hundred years from now, when your artwork is hanging up in a museum, everyone knows exactly who made it. So what you're gonna do is take whatever color of paint you want, or you can use a marker or a pen, and you're gonna find somewhere to put your signature. So I just do my initials on mine, but I just find a corner or somewhere where it fits into the picture. So I'm gonna do my initials right down here, right in the corner. I'm gonna use the blue so it kind of blends in with the snow. Looks more like part of the painting. All right, so there are my initials, and now I have my final painting. So what you wanna do is let this dry completely. Let it just sit here and get really, really dry, and then you can hang it up. And then the final step is that you have to clean up your workspace. So make sure all your paints or whatever you're using, your markers are all closed, capped tightly so they don't dry out. You wanna clean all your brushes really, really well and then clean up your water glass and clean up the whatever you use to cover your workspace. So you can use newspapers to cover up the area where you're painting. I uh, actually just cut up a trash bag because I didn't have any newspapers. Anything to protect the surface from the paint or the markers you're using if you need to do that. Um, if you have a lot of paint left on your plate like I do and you think you'll paint again soon, you can actually cover this up with a piece of plastic wrap and it will keep it the paint wet and you can use it again at a later time so you don't have to throw it away. Otherwise, this can go right into the garbage you don't have to worry about cleaning that up too much. Um, but yeah, other than that, you have your final painting. So here is our painting of our winter rabbit. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you had fun.